1999's Silent Hill for PlayStation, developed by Team Silent at Konami, is arguably one of the most important horror games ever released. The franchise has gone on to release over a dozen games of varying qualities over the past 20 years, and Silent Hill The Short Message is the newest of those games. Now let me just say first that Silent Hill is without a doubt one of the most important games I've ever played. I've played a lot of games, and I love a lot of games, and a lot of games have had an impact on me, but few games have had the impact that Silent Hill has had on me. And I can say as a fan of Silent Hill, that I think I speak for all Silent Hill fans when I say it's been hard to be a Silent Hill fan for a long time. The original Silent Hill is a game I played entirely too young. I remember my older brother was moving out. I was maybe six, seven, around that age, I don't remember exactly, and going through his stuff with him and discovering this loose PlayStation disc and just asking, hey, can I have this? It's a game. And uh, clearly, without paying attention, he said, yeah, sure, whatever. So later that day, I popped Silent Hill into my PlayStation and played probably about 10 or 15 minutes before coming across a corpse hanging from a fence and having to die to a bunch of demon children. After that, I ripped the disc out of my console threw it at the bottom of a drawer and didn't touch it for nearly a decade. The game scared me so much I honestly avoided horror media entirely for years, and it wasn't until the 2006 film adaptation of Silent Hill that I even attempted to watch a scary movie. I remember watching that movie with my thumb on the power button of my remote, waiting for a moment in the movie to scare me the same way that Silent Hill did years prior, and that moment never really coming, and as a result, I think I kind of developed this fascination with horror and the feeling that horror gives you. But to this day, I still can't play Silent Hill alone. I've tried many times. I've never beat that game. The closest I came was in high school when a friend of mine and I were hanging out and we spent most of the day playing Silent Hill. And we got pretty far into the game, but we just never picked it back up at a later date. So that save file never continued. Since then, I've tried to play the game numerous times, and I get about to the same point every attempt because I can only manage to get about 15 or 20 minutes into the game before my anxiety is so high that I have to put the game down. It's safe to say that Silent Hill genuinely traumatized me as a child, but that makes it so important to me. That feeling I felt, that fear I felt, is a feeling I'll never feel from a game again. It's a feeling that's so dependent on this ephemeral state of being naive to horror games and the feeling of playing my first horror game. I'll never be a child again playing a horror game without having any clue what to expect. I'm too old now. I'm too experienced now. It's simply a feeling I'll never feel again. Now I say this just to stress how important this franchise is to me. Silent Hill is one of the most cherished games I've ever played, and I don't claim to be an expert in Silent Hill, I just claim to be a fan of Silent Hill. And I like to think that I have an idea of what it really means to be a Silent Hill game. I don't know if it's something I could really explain, but you can feel when a Silent Hill game is a Silent Hill game. And I really think the short message understands what it means to be Silent Hill. Now I'm recording this just an hour or two after finishing the short message, the free Silent Hill game that launched alongside the combat reveal trailer for Silent Hill 2 during the PlayStation State of Play on January 31st. But I have to say, I think I'm the most excited I've been for Silent Hill since PT. Now the short message by no means is a perfect game. The writing can be very heavy handed at times. It pulls from some past Silent Hill games in a way that some might not really appreciate and the game at times feels very much like an indie horror game from the 2010s, if that makes sense. But while the game pulls from aspects of past games, it doesn't rely on the strength of past Silent Hill games to be good. I think one of the biggest issues with Silent Hill as a franchise is that Konami doesn't really understand what makes Silent Hill good. Konami looks at Silent Hill as a franchise that they feel they can just plug an equation together and output a Silent Hill experience that fans will appreciate, but it's simply just not the case. And Silent Hill Ascension is a testament to that. The It's Trauma emote sticker is so tone deaf to the franchise, it feels like Konami walking in the room saying, hello fellow kids, I too have a trauma, 
and expecting it to be as good as Silent Hill 1, 2, or 3. The fans who've grown up with this franchise like I have understand what it means to be Silent Hill, and they understand what it means for Konami to put some elements together and act like it's Silent Hill. But Silent Hill The Short Message finally feels like Konami let a team take the reins and steer the ship and make the game that they want to make. It feels like Hexadrive is a team made up of people who truly understand what Silent Hill is, and not just what Silent Hill looks like. I mean, it absolutely helps that Masahiro Ito and Akira Yamaoka are on the team bringing this game to life. They're part of the original team, they know what Silent Hill is. But it really feels like Matoi Akimoto truly understands what it takes to make Silent Hill feel authentic. Now fair warning, the game does cover some really heavy topics, like suicide, self-harm, child abuse, and more. And while initially that was kind of off-putting to me, because it felt like the game was almost braggadocious from the beginning, saying that, yeah, this game is that fucked up, you need the suicide hotline if you're gonna play this. By the end of the game, I really appreciated it. And without getting into any real spoilers, the game follows a group of characters who are teenage girls growing up in the 2020s. And while I've never been a teenage girl growing up in the 2020s, I have been someone who's had less than ideal mental health my whole life. And that's what makes this game feel authentic to me. It's clear the game is made by a group of people who understand mental health issues. It's clear the team understands what it means to truly feel depressed, to truly feel suicidal, and to really feel alone. And the game might be a little overt with its imagery when it comes to stuff like rooms where the walls are plastered with sticky notes with negative statements written all over them. It really feels like the team had an artistic vision for trying to personify what it means to feel these emotions that are so hard to accurately describe. The developers clearly understand that depression isn't just sadness, and these feelings that the game represents aren't just a surface level thing. And it's really clear that the developers understand the difference between feeling truly alone and just feeling lonely. They understand the difference between overwhelming despair and just being sad. The game does a really great job of visualizing what sorrow feels like. And that's what makes me excited for Silent Hill as a franchise. Not this remake of Silent Hill 2 from Bloober Team. Especially after seeing the combat reveal trailer today, I can't say my expectations are all that high. But after playing the short message, it feels like Konami's really working with some teams that understand what it is for a game to feel like Silent Hill and not just look like Silent Hill. Silent Hill doesn't need to be a location. The short message takes place in a small German town that's faced economic turmoil for years, and the upcoming Silent Hill Forte takes place in a 1960s rural Japan. Silent Hill doesn't need to be the location your character's in. Silent Hill can be the state of emotional being your character finds themselves in, and that state of being has existed for all of time. These new games feel like a truly fresh take on Silent Hill without pulling the visuals or the imagery from past games to try to be successful. And I'm just so excited for Silent Hill to feel like the game that traumatized me all those years ago.